individual organisms on the planet Earth. Alone, they cannot survive. Survival of organisms can only be achieved by individuals of the same species living together and reproducing in the same place and at the same time. The group formed is called a population. Populations do not live in isolation. They are intermingled with and influenced by populations of other plants and animals. Together, they form communities. Some populations display organization and structure based on age, sex and function. Termites are an example of a highly developed social order where groups of individuals have specialized functions such as reproduction, work and defense. The numbers of organisms within a population change by births, deaths and by movements in and out of the population. Numbers increase by birth or immigration and are reduced by immigration or death. Death rates, for example, are very high in young birds, mice and fish including the catfish and some other native species. To help compensate for these losses, more young are produced and survival of the species is enhanced. Environment can greatly affect numbers and the degree of change in populations. For example, plague grasshoppers have a limited breeding season, a short life cycle, and a pronounced seasonal pattern. When these factors combine with the right environmental conditions, massive increases in populations can result. Some deserts, despite appearing barren during drought, can bloom with a proliferation of species following rain. Drastic change can result from fire, also an environmental influence. Fire has long been part of the natural cycle of some forest species, such as eucalypts. Severe fires can reduce the numbers of a particular species and allow other species to become established. The balance of populations can be changed. Plants and animals may respond to environmental changes in different ways. By spreading themselves over wide areas or by clumping together, they make best possible use of their environment and help ensure survival. Saltbush communities in arid areas consist of single, widely spaced plants. Wide spacing is thought to reduce competition for nutrients and water, greatly improving the plant's ability to survive particularly during droughts. Certain bird species isolate into territories for breeding and then aggregate into flocks during the winter months.
The isolation of populations into groups conserves energy during critical periods, reduces competition, and prevents overcrowding and exhaustion of food supplies. Grouping together enhances the probability of sufficient numbers surviving. Some organisms limit their population size by self-regulation. This is important for survival and is characteristic of termites and kangaroos. These populations maintain a balance between their numbers and the environment on which they depend. For example, when food is scarce, as in drought, fewer kangaroos are born and more young die. The overall effect is a decrease in population numbers. The movement of plants and animals is also vital for survival. It may involve individual organisms or large numbers and can occur in many forms. Movement by migration is an example. Every year, the Tasmanian mutton bird migrates for one particular season to a region where it could not survive year-round. Salvinia is a noxious weed that is fast occupying large areas of inland waterways. It is moved simply by wind and water currents. Movement allows new areas to be populated and for these species to be maintained. Interactions occur between and within plant and animal populations. Some are beneficial, some are not. Termites again provide an example. Within the gut of termites exist single-celled protozoa. These produce enzymes that break down the cellulose consumed by the termite. Without the protozoa, the termite will die. This is a symbiotic relationship where both organisms benefit. Examples are also found in the marine environment. Simple sea sponges provide camouflage and protection for the crabs. The crab, in turn, provides transportation, which enables the sponge to feed. Situations that are not beneficial occur when the natural balance of populations is disturbed. Artificial forests and most of the crops grown by man are monocultures or single species populations. Monocultures are inherently unstable populations, prone to competition from other plants and animals and to a multitude of diseases and parasites. Without man to control these constant threats, monocultures could not survive in the form we know them today. Populations and communities alter as a result of changes in numbers, individuals or environment. The cane toad was introduced as a biological control for some insect pests in sugar cane. This project failed but since then, the cane toad has adapted and exploited its new environment, reaching near plague proportions in parts of Queensland and exerting a serious threat upon some wildlife. Similar changes to populations and communities can be seen in such plants as the prickly pear, also an introduced species. In the 1920s, Prickly pear forced many farmers from their land in the Queensland-New South Wales border region 
but today only isolated clumps of pear remain. The dramatic decline in pear populations has been brought about by larvae of the Cactoblastus moth, a natural predator of the pear that reduces tissue to a pulp. Introduced from South America, Cactoblastus feeds exclusively on the pear and has very few enemies to weaken its impact. Cactoblastus greatly reduced the prickly pear in a very short time and allowed other species of plants and animals to form new communities in areas that the pear once occupied. Populations exist in a dynamic state of flux. They are constantly changing through alterations in age, numbers and environmental influence. No population is the same as one that has passed. No present population will be the same as that which follows.